where the majority of the startups uh, or, or entrepreneurs who are thinking to jump into the ecosystem, uh, usually they struggle in the beginning. So I usually speak about bootstrapping and what we mean about bootstrapping is how to move from the ideation phase into actually doing things. Um, so before we jump into all of that, even though that my slides is very short, I don't do long slides. I prefer to have interaction uh, between me and the attendees. Um, we will have a straightforward agenda. Um, Dr. Isra already gave you a brief about myself. Um, I will touch on specific points while introducing myself again. Um, we will touch into the ideation phase, the idea, the three Fs concept, MVP, which is very important, and then validation and execution. And during this, I will speak a little bit about the two startups that um, I established. And I will tell you what went wrong during the execution, during the first baby steps in order to uh, avoid the, these mistakes. So, my name is Mohammed uh, Traith. Um, I've been into technology since a young age, um, more than 20 years of experience, uh, specialized in uh, cloud computing and cloud infrastructure. Currently, I'm holding a position of uh, manager of IT and cloud infrastructure in Infonas. Um, I spanned a lot of different technologies when it comes to technologies. Uh, I started with, of course, with Microsoft, but now I'm equipped with um, cloud mentality, specifically with AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, as well as uh, Oracle uh, Cloud Infrastructure. Um, so having all these technologies since a young age, um, I got my first um, certification, a professional certification, while I was doing my degree in University of Bahrain back in 2006. And during that time, I had to travel to do the certification, so I didn't do it in, in the country, in our kingdom. I did it in India. Uh, at that time, I took a break from university. I went there for almost six months, very intensive classes to just get uh, the knowledge and get the certification. And I came back uh, to Bahrain. I graduated. I got my first job, second job, third job, which was in Central Bank of Bahrain. And during that time, I became a Microsoft trainer. And at the same area, I found myself that I want to do something different than just sitting in the office and doing office work. And this is what brought me actually to the entrepreneurship, and that was in 2014. So it's almost eight years now uh, involved with the ecosystem. At that time, there were there were no funding. Um, like entities in Bahrain, except Tanmu. Um, I met with uh, the ex CEO of Tanmu. His name is Hassan Haider. And I gave him the idea of fish transporter. He liked the idea. I went through different interviewing processes. And from there, we got our first chunk of funds. It was something new to me, something strange, uh, to receive funds from uh, uh, another company, to establish a company where they want to see only results. Okay. After that, I started working on Fish Transporter. We did good numbers. It was basically a very simple idea. It was an e-commerce website. 
you go to the website, select the fish, select the type of cleaning, place an order. We will deliver. We will deliver it to your house the next day. Very simple, straightforward. Um, doesn't take even like five minutes to select whatever you need, and then we will deliver it to your day the next day. Um, during that time, we had some sort of difficulties to scale the business model. So I came up with fish.me. And what distinguished fish.me from fish transporter is that fish.me fish is a mobile app. It's basically a marketplace where any fisherman or any company that sells fish, they can list their items and the consumer on the other side he can select whatever he needs and we will deliver it to them so it's the same concept but with with multi vendor and we called it fish.me during this phase we received for fish.me we received additional funding from 500 startups we received more funding from uh, FA holding and we applied for a grant from Expo 2020 and we got selected after multiple rounds of uh, interviewing, going through the process, knowing the team, etc. etc. So that's all about myself, but if I want to speak more. It's about this. Walt Disney always says the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. So in 2014, I had to make a very difficult decision, which is quitting a job in Central Bank of Bahrain just to do fish transport. So even like right now, if they ask me to do it again, I might not. But at that stage, actually, I did. And that's what made me who I am now. Uh, more involved in the ecosystem, uh, knowing people here and there, knowing where to go to get funded, um, knowing how to build things from scratch up. Uh, these things will never be an easy task, but with iteration, this will happen eventually. So you will have to form a team at the end. So in this slide, I'm putting just five random pictures. It could be all of them, you at the beginning, one person doing sales, doing marketing, doing uh, strategy, doing uh, customer service, doing everything. But eventually you will be growing up. And this is where, this at this stage or at this point, this is where a startup will start growing or it will fail. Because choosing the right partner for yourself, it's just, it's just like marriage. Because you will end up with these people for the next three, five, ten years, nobody knows until when. But you will end up with these people, seeing them every day at work. You will work with them, you will fight with them, will, you will um, leave work and go like have some sort of inter entertainment together. So these people, it will be like your family, outside your family. So you need to choose properly who will be doing what at this stage and and if you don't have a technology background and you just simply have the idea you will eventually need what we call them a CTO or a shift technology officer so this point or this phase is very critical at all the stages so when you are onboarding people to your team 
you need to be very conscious about what will they do and how they will do it. There is one saying uh, about this stage that you should keep in mind uh, is that your hiring process or onboarding people to the team should be really slow, but firing them should be really quick. If someone is not doing the job, he's not the right partner for you. So this is where you will feel some sort of um, heartless. Uh, you need to keep the emotions aside and you just simply tell the person that you don't have a spot within the team. This slide speaks about the rest of my agenda and we will speak about each part of them separately. So the ideation phase is important. And so is the three Fs, MVP, validation and execution. The first thing that you need to know that if you have an idea of building something, will stay an idea until you start taking action. An idea in your head, it's not making money, it's not, it's not selling basically. Um, and the more you speak about it to others and get feedback, the more it will, uh, it will stay in your head and the more you will get to know the ups and downs of that idea. And some people, like if they have an idea and, and they refuse to speak about it to others, I'm totally against that. You should speak about your idea because we are almost 8 billion people in this globe. And no matter how, I, how the idea is unique, don't think that somebody else didn't think about it. Sometimes um, an idea will sell in Far East, for example, Eastern Asia or, or in the States, but it will not work in Middle East or in Bahrain. And the vice versa, sometimes something will work here and it will not work there. So the ideation phase is simply getting to know what you will sell, how you will sell it, and what is the value proposition of that product that you are building? If you are selling fish, for example, you need to know the prices of fish, you need to know the types of fish, you need to know the types of cleaning of fish, how to preserve fish, like during the transport, during logistics. These things need to be there from the beginning. And, and then you go to the three apps which is friends, family, and food. And sorry for that word, but this is something I learned. Um, that three Fs here, we have friends, family, and fools. These are your first customers. When you will build something, definitely you will speak to your friends and family. And sometimes people who has some eagerness to know what you are doing or, or uh, what, is, what, what, is, what is it that you are building and how will you sell it. These people will be your first customers. These people are the first link to making your idea grow and goes towards the execution. You can give them surveys, you can simply ask them hey, um, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm thinking of selling um, like tires for, for vehicles, for cars. And I'm, I'm thinking of uh, having a website that has different type of tires, different sizes. What do you think about that? And the more feedback you will get from them, that's where you will start to reach to the MVP, okay? So 
more feedback, more feedback, more feedback, or maybe you, you even can start selling at this point. Like just take one day off of your busy schedule and go to the fish market and deliver some fish to your family or to a friend. I'm doing this. How about I'm changing tires for you? For It's just an example. How about um, I'm selling some dresses, for example, for ladies? Um, it could be anything. This will give you the indication on how to build an MVP. Anybody knows what is an MVP? No one? So an MVP is a minimal viable product. It's the simplest product that you can build and that will make your business work. So if I'm selling um, tires, again to the tires example, I'm building just a web page, for example, or an Instagram page or whatever the platform you are selling on top of, you are building something just to see how people will react to that. And, and you start to do some sort of marketing through WhatsApp, through Google ads, through Facebook ads, through different, different mechanisms. So you make it as simple as possible and you start testing. While testing, you will reach to the validation phase. And while you are validating, you need to upsell. And here, while you are selling, basically, you are getting feedback because, because all, all the time you will need to have feedback from your customers. This is where you will reach to the last point. You are at, at the execution phase. You are building the product the right way getting more feedback, fixing things, and, and that's how you will grow. When I started Fish Transporter, it was just through WhatsApp, 2014. After that stage, I had my first website. After getting some feedback, I built the website, I put fish photos, I took one photographer, to come to the fish market, taking photos of the different type of fish. And, and then we started to put different type of cleaning and then categorizing the fish, what can be grilled, what can be uh, fried, what can be uh, like filleted. Uh, these type of things, we call them added value uh, services. These type of things made people come again to the website and again and again. And until now, we are receiving clients who are texting me on WhatsApp, even though that the website is down because Fish Transporter is no longer available. I had to shut it down during the pandemic. Um, but still, uh, I'm receiving uh, messages, I'm receiving orders, and I'm redirecting those orders to some people that I already know in the market. So in summary, building your product is not something easy, but it's not hard. And you need to find the passion during the work.